Hey, what is up everybody? This is Anthony. We are back and today we are going to complete the web page we were making where we were connecting to our Gmail account and pulling labels over. But this time we're not going to, number one, we're not going to uh, use the command line at all. It's going to come straight through the browser and that is it. And number two, we're going to learn a little bit about how to use classes in PHP. So if you're interested in learning how to organize and structure your code, this is the video for you as well. So let's jump right into it. If you have not seen the last episode, then that will help you with this one. So please watch episode one and two in order to see where we're at now in order to continue. All right, so let's jump right into it. The index.php is our entry point of our program. And you can see down at the bottom here, I've got this yo-yo class, which I've created here. And I've got beginning and ending HTML, and then Go is really what's populating my web page. So that is here. Now within Go, I'm going to say, let's create a new connection. So I haven't really built out this class yet, so let's do it now. And luckily, we'll be able to use a lot of the same code from the quick start that we got from the developers.google page and just modify it a little bit to make it more a little bit more user friendly. So let's look at the connection class. And down here, if you have been following along, you'll know that this is literally word for word the quickstart.php code. We're going to start pulling from this and putting it up here where it applies and then deleting what we don't need. So for example, right here, require vendor autoload. We don't need that because we've already got that taken care of here. So we're going to delete that. We're not using the command line, so we can get rid of that. And then eventually you can see it's just going to go away and then it's going to be where it needs to be. All the, all the code will. So starting with the constructor, because remember the first thing that happens when you create this is the constructor is called. The constructor is going to call this create client method. Now the create client method is here, create client. And what it does is it pretty much does the same thing as the get client function from the original quick start. So what we can do is we can actually start stepping through this and moving stuff from the bottom to the top. So let's do that now. Let's take all the clients. Um, yep, all that stuff can go. Token path. Yep, that can go. We can go down to testing if it's expired. That can go as well. And I don't think we're going to do the create auth URL in the same flow. So let's just stop there. So we're going to take all of this code, we're going to cut it, and then we're going to paste it up into the create client method. Now the fun thing about the way I'm doing this today is I'm going to build this thing, I'm going to compile it, and if it blows up in my face, I really don't care. I'm going to try to fix it, and I've got 15 minutes to get this done. So let's see how this works. So we just moved all this down. Now there's a few scenarios where that we need to take into consideration here. So the first one is if there is no previous token. If there is no previous token, we need to account for that. If it is expired, then we need to account for that. So let's start looking at, or walking these through. We're saying if it is expired, but notice the comment here says this will return the same value if it doesn't exist or if it's expired. So we need to account for both of those right now. So this is if it ex exists and then the next one is if it doesn't so else if this credentials in browser and if you recall up here somewhere uh, credentials in browser yep we have this method that we haven't built out yet but we will shortly and it's going to return a true or false if the credentials are in the browser then auth code equals get underscore, oops, that wasn't right, uh, dollar underscore get code. And we're going to echo. Yeah, we're not going to echo anything. Let's just leave it like that. So we'll say get code. Now the next thing we have to consider is once we get the code, well, what do we do? Now let's look at our code down below and see that we actually got the auth code here from the command line. So the difference is, is I'm getting it from my browser instead of my command line. So that means that I've accounted for all of this. That's good. I have not accounted for this yet where we actually create the auth URL because that is going to happen in a different method, it looks like. So we'll leave that for now. But down here, 
we definitely need to do this. So we're going to cut this and we are going to paste this into the scenario in which you are pulling it from the browser, okay? So let's, let's paste that there. And remember, we're still missing the creation of the auth URL, but don't worry about that for now. We'll get that later. Now, the next thing that needs to happen is we need to save that uh, to a file, of course. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's, let's back up. Let's look at the different scenarios. So we've got, it exists, we've got, it's in the browsers, the browser, browser, and if it's not, the only other scenario is that it doesn't exist, right? So we, we are going to return false. We're going to say this is connected equals false, and then we'll just return the client that we actually were, was able to build, um, and we're still missing some information in that client that we can't get because we don't have access yet. So we'll do that. Those are our three scenarios. Now the next thing is where we're going to save that token to a file. So let's take a look at this. Save token to file here, and then you can see the last thing is we're returning the client. So let's cut this out, and we only want to save the token to the file if we were able to actually um, get the, the credentials. So let's do that now. I believe that this one should be pasted. Let's see. For brackets, we've got this is the beginning and end of our if. So yes, so that should go there. And then this here is the end of our if, our main if here. So if it's expired, do all of this. If it's not expired, then we're good, right? We don't really need to do anything. Let's just toss an echo here. We'll say echo p uh, not expired. Just so that we know once we're, we're running this that we're using a valid non-expired uh, token. Cool. So that should be it for that portion here. And the last thing is we're going to set the uh, the is connected value to true. Is connected equals true. So you can see that if we end up here, we are connected. If we don't end up here and we end up here, then we are not connected. Return client. So no matter what, we want to return the client. And that should be it for that method. Now, the next thing let's take a look at is we said that we're, we've got this credentials in browser. So how are we going to be able to test to see if the, that is in the browser, if the code is in the browser? So think back to the previous video when we actually were um, pulling it from the command line. Instead of pulling it from the command line, we are pulling it from the browser, and the value was code. So in your browser, it will say code equals something. So that's this right here. We're going to say um, if get code, then return true, and otherwise return false. Let's do it that way. So that way you can see the actual difference. If the code is there, return true. If it's not, return false. And that should be it there. Now, these next ones get client, so you can see that this is our client right here. It's literally just a getter. So if you're not familiar with classes and how getters work, they're pretty simple. And it's a way that you can return the value of a variable without accessing that variable directly in the class. Most variables should be private, so we'll just keep that here. So we'll say return this client, all right? And get credentials, we'll say the same thing. We'll say return this credentials. Simple, right? For this one, same thing. Return this is connected. And so this get unauthenticated data. Let's, let's jump over to the index and I'll explain that a little bit. So remember, if we are connected, then we want to access the Gmail. If we're unable to connect, then we want to send us send the user to a screen that will allow them to view a prompt that will allow them to connect. So you'll see what this looks like here in a minute. But um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, da, 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 da. let me find it here. Here we go. We're going to have this auth URL. Now, if you recall. Down below, I left some code there. <clears throat> uh, this this here, auth URL. So let's take this now. 
you can see all we have left is really nothing, so we can pretty much get rid of all of that. And let's take that and put it up into this get unauthenticated data. So let me just paste this and then we'll pretty it up. Equals this client create auth URL, and that should work. All right, so after we create the auth URL, remember in the command line version, it said, please follow this link and take the code from the browser. So instead, we're going to say return a href equals auth URL. Click here to link your account. And that should redirect the user to a page to view this, and then they can click on it, and they will end up with their code. So that the next time it comes through, when it creates the client, it's going to find the code in the browser, credentials in browser, and it's going to run this iteration. So this is definitely important for the first time you've used it. So let's save that. The next thing is actually, let's just run through. It looks all good, 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 good. Um, is to look at the bottom and see that we've got this Gmail stuff. So this is all of the code for the labels. None of this matters here because this is not the Gmail class. So let's save that and move over to our Gmail class. And as you can see, again, we've got all of the code from the quick start. We delete what we don't need. We don't need any of the Git client stuff. We don't need anything down to here. This is all that's left. So let's see what we can do with this. So literally, the the code can be copied and pasted from down here to the top. So let's start with, actually, let's take it all. Let's do this. Let's do cut. And we will paste right here into read labels, because that's what we're doing. We are actually reading the labels. And the only thing the constructor does, really, is allows us to use the client that is being passed in. So we're going to say this client equals con get actually no we just say client right client because we didn't send in the con we sent in the client itself so we're saying that this client equals the client that we passed in from here and that is all and then an in index we say return gmail read labels so gmail read labels and then run all of this now let's just make sure all this code is good um, yeah, it looks good. Actually, no, hang on. So here you see it says client. Here's a matching video. Well, what was that? We're going to say this client. So now I'm actually accessing the particular client that's in our class here. And everything else should work. The user is me. Let's save it and see what happens. If this doesn't work, it's okay. I'm actually okay with that because that'll allow us to debug a little bit and uh, there'll be more for us to learn. So let's do that. Let's move over Gmail and index. Um, that should be it. So let's go to our page, try to navigate to it and see what happens. So we have an error, sure enough, we do. Uh, let's refresh this and take a look and see what our error is. And we'll try to work through it really quick. Unexpected end of file in connection. So let's see. Um, that means that there's a bracket missing, likely. Yep. So public function create client, begin bracket, end bracket, but I don't have the end of my class. Very simple. Uh, if it's something else, then we'll go back and we'll look again. But that was a pretty obvious one. So we'll delete this error log. And we will see if this works now. There you go. Click here to link your account. So what just happened is it went into connection, realized that we are not connected, and then returned the unauthenticated data, which is this. We're going to choose an account. We're going to say, yes, it's not verified because it's a temporary um, program that I'm building. It's saying it's not safe. That's fine. Once you're ready to go into production, you'll do things like create privacy pages and all sorts of stuff. And hey, look, it worked. Um, but for right now, it's okay that you just navigate past that page. So look, all of my labels are here, and it showed up in my screen. You can see in my window here, the code is there, and it actually ran it from the connection code here. 
and we've got about seven seconds left. So thanks for tuning in. In the next video, I'm going to make this even better. So have a good day.